Storygram Network. Hosting for this podcast is generously provided by Transistor at Transistor.fm. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening to Fresh Faces. I'm Aggie Gold, talent agent and former manager. This is my exclusive podcast about how to get your child into commercials, television, and the movies without getting ripped off. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Fresh Faces with Aggie Gold. That's me. Today, we have Denise Simon. And what a guest. What a guest. She is a veteran of the industry as an actress, teacher, director, casting director, and personal talent manager. She's also a certified life coach. Denise is also a contributing writer at Backstage.com and has been teaching young adults the craft of acting for over 30 years. She's also the author of Parenting in the Spotlight, How to Raise a Child Star Without Screwing Them Up, and is the host of Parenting in the Podcast on Spotify, Apple, and Google. Welcome, Denise. So great to have you here. And what I'm so excited because you have so much experience and you have you go back way before COVID. And this is what everybody wants to hear. So welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Aggie. And it's so great to, to be here with you again after so many years because we go way back too. And we both started oh in gosh. management. I know. Wow. I think I met you. You were a little kid. You were working with Gene Fox at Fox Albert. Right. And you were a little kid. And we did Live Aid together. Did. Do you remember that? That was crazy. I was in my 20s and I was just starting out. Didn't even know what a manager was. And, uh, you know, almost 40 years later, look at that. So I know we'll talk about everything, but let's go to the beginning. Okay. Sure. Were you a child star? Did your mom want you to do it or dad or whoever? I was a child actor. I was not a child star. I wanted to be a child star, <laughs> but I was just a young girl with a big passion for this. And my parents didn't know what to do. We didn't have a book like yours or mine or podcasts. So, you know, I sort of drove the bus and led the way and, you know, did lots of little things here and there. But when it was time to go to college, uh, you know, that's, I think, where it really all started for me. I was lucky enough to get my BFA at Florida State, which was and, and still is just, you know, one of the best acting programs in the country. And and from there, um, did my apprenticeship with Burt Reynolds at his theater for a year and got to work with amazing actors. And my mentor is Charles Nelson Riley. And Burt, of course, led me to New York, where I started my own acting career. However, after pounding the pavement and, you know, being on a soap for a little bit and, you know, really not making money and realizing, you know, this was hard. That's when I met Jean Fox uh, from Fox Albert uh, and uh, was asked to join their firm as a talent manager. And that's really where it all began uh, on the other side of the table. That was quite a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> that was, those were the best days. I remember being a manager. That was so much fun. Remember we had all this freedom to to take these kids and to do things with them. And we had some great experiences. And now things are very different. Um, what are you doing right now? What, what is your, I know you do a million things. I do. Yeah. <laughs> so I focus today is uh, not developing talent so much as teaching young actors the craft of acting and also the business of acting. And in addition to teaching kids, mentoring and guiding parents and families of child actors. I uh, do a lot with the unions, I'm a big child advocate, and my goal is to help parents raise happy and healthy young adults through the entertainment industry or through whatever their passion is. Yeah, that, that was my goal the whole time I was a manager and an, and an agent. Um, Parents don't seem to realize how much work is put into getting is put into getting a child into this business. They see a kid on television who takes a bite of a hamburger and they say, oh, God, my kid could do that. And it's not that simple. 
but also good actors make acting look easy. So that's why so many people think they can be actors. As a matter of fact, we have all these influencers now. They have this huge following and they want to be actors, but they don't know the first thing about it. And so when we have that first meeting and we talk about um, you know what it's going to take, a lot of them drop out. They, they, they really don't want to put the work in or they're not interested in doing the work. I know. And now the work is even harder because now they have to tape their children. Right. And coach their children while they're being taped. And it, it screws them up. I mean, it, it's not the best thing for a kid to have a parent coach them in acting if they know nothing about it. Well, so Aggie, I teach classes for parents in this mm -hmm. and I do allow parents in my sessions uh, initially so that they um, understand how to do this as well, since they're really the ones doing it during the week when they don't have the time or the money or the resources to hire a coach myself to help them coach it or tape it. You know, they're on the road, they're traveling, they've got to do a fast self tape. They do need to know a thing or two. So in addition to training the kids, I train the parents as well. Yeah, that's very important. You know, when I used to interview children, I always had the parents stay and watch because when I gave kids sides and I gave them direction and they did the same thing 13 times and never changed, it was the way to show the parent that their kid is really not ready for this business. So I always made sure that the parents were there because it's very hard to tell a parent after you spend some time with the child and then they walk into the room and you say, I'm sorry, your child's not ready. And they look at you like you're crazy. What do you mean? You know, my kid is perfect. They can do everything. So I get it. Parents need more education than the kids because kids are, especially young children, they're very natural. Yeah, the young children cannot take control of the equipment and the self-taping. You know, for the older kids, I, I they don't need the parents as much. Uh, they might need them as a reader, but many of them are pretty resourceful with tech more than you and I. And so I decided to take a course and become a life coach. I, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. I thought possibly I was going to leave the business and maybe just become a life coach. But I had this thriving, wonderful business. And so the life coaching just helped augment what I already do. And so by becoming a life coach, it allowed me to now work with parents in a way that I was never able to communicate with them before. And also with adults as well, who maybe are, you know, transitioning out of the business, like I did as an adult, I realized I wasn't going to make a living with acting, I wanted to do something else. And, and so because I've been in the industry so long, and I've been on every side of the table, I feel like I'm a good person to do that with. But it is just about really learning how to listen, uh, life coaching, how to listen, reframe, and, um, and help somebody move forward in whatever area of their life they're in. My life coaching today, my clients usually will come to me, um, again, business related, but uh, I am a life coach really for, for anybody who wants to do um, a move forward in an area that they might be stuck in. That's so fascinating. Give me an example of what coaching somebody as a life coach changes or does for them so i had a young boy he was very very is very 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 talented and he was really getting overwhelmed and he would come home and tell his mom i i don't think i can do this anymore or i'm getting too many additions i don't have enough time to play with my friends i don't have time to be on my devices and I, but yet he was so talented and his manager, you know, was saying, look, I, you know, I, I hope you stay in the business, but that's up to you. And the mom recognized the potential. And so, you know, she hired me after speaking to him because he was totally on board with this. She hired me not to coach him with acting, but to life coach him through why he was stuck. Did he really want to do this? And at the end of our sessions, he realized he could do both. He could do both by turning down some jobs. He didn't have to accept every audition and about learning how to balance and for his mom to learn how to do that too, you know, how to advocate for themselves and, and speak to the manager and say, look, I want to continue doing this, but I'm not going to go out for these roles. And she was on board with it. And I will tell you today, he is on Broadway. He's got a television series. And this is a working actor that worked through that at the age of 12 right now. He started- That's wonderful. I with me at 10. So that's that's coaching a child. I will tell you that most of my life coaching are parents 
who are so distraught with why their child is not working and, you know, what do they do? And, and does their child really have talent? And should they be doing this? And should they be spending money doing this? And the poor parent it is more trouble than the, than the, the actor. And so they really need the guidance on how to, how to parent a working or trying to be working young actor. Yeah. You know, interesting. There's no books on how to be a parent. <laughs> so parents in general really need work. In a lot of different um, aspects of raising a child. Um, you, you mentioned something. I mean, I'm not a life coach. I never was. But it was always important to me that this should not be the only thing in a child's life because it could end instantly. So I made sure that my kids went to summer camp. So they missed some auditions um, that they did their sports because otherwise they would get very discouraged. And we're also talking about children who are very talented. I believe that children who are talented should be using those talents, their God-given talents. And why not, you know, but keep them normal, keep them normal, let them have their birthday parties. I mean, I had clients years ago, I remember one kid, he booked a major role in a movie, I mean, a huge role. And it started shooting the day of his high school graduation. And he was singing a song at this graduation, a solo. And it was, it broke my heart. But he yeah. did the movie, of course. <laughs> you do have to make sacrifices. But yeah. yes, I totally agree with you. It is so important because, you know, this business, you just don't know. You could be the most talented actor and not get the part. It has nothing to do with your talent. So, yes, you have to continue to do that. And also, I really encourage my clients to do other things that keep them well-rounded and, and bring something to the table as young actors. Definitely. Especially young children who then start going through their, their adolescence or their, their, I guess, puberty, you want to call it. And they change. They become a little awkward. They get pimples sometimes, you know, bad complexion. Um, they're, they're, they start getting braces. There's a lot of things that are happening to them. And if this is the only thing in their life, they're going to be devastated. They have to understand that, okay, we're going through a period right now. There's not going to be that much work. There might be voiceovers, but that's about it or jingles. So it's, it's important that they keep it in perspective and that they, I think what you're doing is fabulous. It's so important. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, and people don't realize that especially a lot of agents and managers that represent children. They find a talented kid and that's it. This kid has to go on every audition. And if they don't, the agent gets upset. And, and what happens is then they burn out and then they don't want to continue. If they can't do their school musical anymore or they can't play or community theater. Look, I get they need to be available. You and I were both, you know, managers and, and you as an agent, you know, you need your, your talent to be available for auditions. But again, it's about balance because if they're not getting roles, their self-esteem goes in the toilet. If they're doing their school play and, you know, taking classes regularly, they're getting, you know, empowered and, and they're feeling good about themselves and they have to, or they're not going to go the distance. Right. And if they happen to take a lead in a school play, they're going to get out of the business for a while. You know, they're going to have to book out because right. so don't take you want to be in a school play. Great. Don't take the lead, <laughs> you know, communicating with your rep and, and having that conversation, you know, so that, you know, you guys are on the same, you know, the client and the rep are on the same page about it and having somebody that supports that. Of course. Yeah, it's very. How, how do you. um when you find a child that you feel doesn't have the potential, but you've got the parents that are pushing and making the kid crazy, how do you handle that? Is your life coach uh, experience helpful in that aspect? Look, my life coaching experience is is helpful in everything in my life. I think everybody should have to go, you know, take a course and <laughs> become a life coach because it, you know. But um, I, look, I'm never going to tell anybody to get out of the business because. Um, I, I might guide them to, oh, I had, a, I'll give you an example, a, a young gal, she was not even so, uh, she was in her early twenties or late teens, came to me, a young, from a 
maybe the South. Um, she was very, very religious and she wanted to enter the business, but she was getting sent out on things that were really racy and that had, you know, a, a, a strong language and strong themes and she couldn't do any of it. And eventually I, I guided her toward maybe you want to look at, at getting involved in Christian theater or, you know, theater that's going to still, you're still able to do what you want. Maybe this business, this isn't for you, but there are other forms of the business that are. So it's what experience do you want out of this, which is just one of the questions I really love to get an answer to, because you don't always have to do it for money for fame is always the wrong answer, but you don't have to be in the business. You can still pursue a performing career. I was a performer and about 10 years ago, uh, when I had some life changes, I needed to be, I needed to, to do my art again, but I wasn't about to go try to do it for money. And so I started doing stand up, and I was in a band and I didn't do it for money. It was just a hobby. And it made me feel so good about myself. And that's why I did it. So, well, yeah, what I was going to say was on um, with that aspect, yes, you were right and it was wonderful, but I'm sure you had some form of income so you could do that. Yes. That's yes. important. You know, I had a client who was very talented also. Parents were very poor and he started earning money and they were able to put a little extension on their house and the kid got his first bedroom in his oh. life, you know, oh. so that was wonderful. I mean, some really great things can happen with that. Um, but, you know, somehow I think I think getting to the parent is more important than actually getting to the child. Yeah, I mean, you know, we talk, you know there are resources out there, you know, uh, that's why I wrote my book. That's why I have my podcast. You have your podcast, you know, and, and so there are resources now for, for parents to get on to listen, to get more information, not to get the information from the other parents, you know, in the waiting room. Well, there's no waiting room anymore to an audition, but, you know, who they talk to on the Facebook group, you know, but there's a, there is information out there now on how, uh, you know, to, to get realistic and set expectations for themselves yeah, as well. There is. I know. It's wonderful. Uh, it's a lot of things have changed since COVID, but I think a lot of them have changed for the better. I agree. It, you know, I mean, it was easier when you sent a child on an audition and they met the casting director in person and they were able to get their personality across. Now it's a little different because you're giving them exactly what they want and that's a script. Um, but I think that uh, the other, like the things that you mentioned, the, 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 the resources that the parents have now are much more enriching and much more important. And I think they look at it a little differently now than they did. Because then the only thing they had was seeing kids on TV or in movies and saying, oh, this is easy. Now it's a little different. Now I think they're getting the real picture. Yeah. And, you know, you and I are interview for our podcast. We interview, you know, veterans of the industry who've been around right. a long time. Those are the people you listen to to get a reality check as well and to stay current. So, uh, you know, uh, on on um, my podcast, Parenting in the Spotlight, really uh, after my book, uh, you know, it's free. You can stream it on Apple, Spotify, Google, and I'm about to start season two. And I'm interviewing some very big casting directors and agents and former child actors. And it's a wonderful resource. Um, you know, the book you can get on Amazon, you can get it at the Drama Bookshop. And and again, a wonderful resource. I'll be updating it soon, right? Because it's like I wrote it before COVID. Yeah. Uh, Although this self-tape phenomenon was, was still big. But I, I want to say one thing about that, because I agree with you. A lot a lot of young actors and actors in general feel like, oh, it's so hard now. I don't get to be in the room. I don't get the energy of the room. But on the flip side, you get to retape your tape a dozen times if you want to get it where you want it to be. Don't make yourself crazy about that. But, you know, whereas going in the room once you get it one shot and that's it. So you really are in a better position right now to do better work. Well, you know, I agree with that and disagree with that because anyone could do fabulous in any script if they do it a thousand times, okay? So to me, like, I, when, I, when I would get tapes from children who sang, I know they could 
alter the tapes and change them and make the kids sound like they're on pitch. So as beautiful as it sounded, I need to hear them in person because I don't trust that so much. So, so you have a kid who auditions on a tape and does it a hundred times, let's say, and really gets it perfect. What's going to happen when they walk into that, to that callback or, or the job, let's say they get the job because of their wonderful tape. That kind of bothers me a little bit. But I will say, right. So yes, everything is done on tape initially, but not You know, they are bringing them in the rooms for the final callbacks of things. I mean, I I think in TV and film, they're booking actors off of a tape uh, and that's really on them. Right. So now, okay, so uh, now they'll get on the set. And if they can't produce. Yeah. I mean, what's going to happen? There's a consequence. They may not be able to keep the job. But I think that casting directors are getting really good at doing this now. And um, as I speak to them, this is how they want to continue the business. It's working for them overall. Yeah. And I think they like the fact that they're working from home. <laughs> Some of them. Yeah. No, I I, yeah. I think they like the camaraderie, but I think the WeWork has done very well because when they have to have that group meeting, you know, they will they will get together. But uh, yeah, look, we're living in, a, in such a different world. And and um, yeah, there's pluses and minuses, you know, pros and cons to it for sure. I know. Um, do you have some really great memories of uh, what we did together with the uh, children I, to children and, and all uh, that stuff? Those were the best times. Wow. Uh, I remember taking a young client, his, his, he was one of four children. And so the parents were very busy. They had a new baby. They didn't have time to do this. They, you know, and he was so talented and he was screen testing out in California and they couldn't take him. So they signed, uh, I became power of attorney. I took him to California. That, that wouldn't happen today. I don't think, but it was a wonderful experience. And today we are so close. He's in his forties now. He's a dear friend. Mine and his young brother, who was also a young working actor, who I was able to take to auditions, is now a professor of physics at Harvard. And was, I mean, he's brilliant. He's going to, you know, cure cancer. Uh, yeah, I mean, watching these children who we were so close with, we had these tight relations with, now become adults and parents and doing wonderful things in the world. You know, and and Jacob Barron, this was his name. And, and in my book, I interviewed him, and he says, you know, I don't, I wouldn't be at Harvard. I wouldn't be doing this without, yeah. without passes, without your guidance, without the improvisation is what he he uh, attributes it all to. So, watching them become very successful and happy adults is is the hap- That's what makes me so happy. I know. I just interviewed somebody last week, Michael Bo- Booer, Boa, Michael Boa, and he was one of my clients. Now he's married with children and he <laughs> has a great job. And he said to me, everything I learned from you helped me, which is my own children who I really didn't want in the business because I was busy playing fresh faces all day. So I couldn't really drop what I was doing and run into Manhattan with the children for auditions. But They got so much out of it. Like when they did, let's say, an oral report in school, their teacher said, if I made an announcement and said to the class, we're going to have an oral presentation coming up, um, my children's hands went up. They said, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. And the other kids would cringe. And Mike and the teacher would tell me your kids not only stood up in front of the class, but they took pictures with them and they had visual things to show. So they were like and it helped them. They're both very well. You know, they both have children now. They're married and they have great jobs and they're they're not afraid to meet people. I mean, after meeting the president of ABC, it doesn't matter who you meet anymore because they're just. A naked person sitting behind a desk, which I used to tell them. <laughs> but that, but that's the why. That's why when a parent will say, should I get out of the business? I said, does your child want to do this? Does it make them happy? You do it. Not because they're going to be, you know, working actors, because we know statistically they're not. But because they're going to be able to close the deal, they're going to be able to, you know, deliver the speech. I uh, interviewed a young actor in my book, David Quinn, who was was a young actor, auditioned a lot. And um, when he he transitioned out of the industry, he started allrecipes.com. Now, when you go online for a recipe, that's the first thing that pops up. David started that business with with a bunch of who looked at and it was time to close the deal. They looked at David and said, you do it because you know how. Yeah. That's a great website. Yeah, I love it. I love it. (laughs) Chapter two in my book, right? It's why it's all of the life lessons that you, you know, young children, anybody in this industry 
forgets the lessons they gain, the biggest one being transferable skills. Everything you learn, you can now transfer to anything that you do in life. Absolutely. It's so different than learning anything else. You know, a musical instrument. Yes, you can you can play the musical instrument, but this really spreads into everything you do in life. And it's the self-confidence that you get. That's right. the most important thing in the world. <laughs> but also, Aggie, I think it's really important for them to surround themselves with mentors. You were a wonderful mentor to your clients, as you know, was I and Jean and, and, and we we it was a very different world. So as a personal talent manager, that's what we did. It was very personal, right? Our clients slept on our floor when they didn't have a place to sleep. It was very different. Now the managers, you know, are almost like the agents. They have a lot of clients and it's not that personal touch anymore. I found a few uh, that, that still work like we did in the old days, but life is different. We're all very busy. We don't, you know, there's not a lot of time. And so so, um, but I think, yeah, surrounding yourself with with good people, and there are so many of them in our business that just, you know, want to help, uh, want to help, right? Want to want to guide you, and and so seek them out. We speak about them, um, you know, on these podcasts, and um, it's very easy to find us, right? We're all over the web. You can find our book, our podcast, uh, our email, and and I'm always, always happy to return an email and to help anybody that I can. I do a lot of work with SAG-AFTRA, and uh, the Actors Fund Looking Ahead Committee is what I've been working on the last few years, and that is a wonderful resource for working child actors as well. I know. Do you have any advice you want to give any parents out there? So, I, you know, again, listen to your child. If this speaks to them, if this is what makes them happy, find ways to support them. It can be expensive, but you don't have to, you know, pour all your money into it. Do some research. You know, there's so much out there now you can take classes online. So if you're living in a small town, don't get disturbed, discouraged that you can't do this anymore. Find a class that works for your child online. Do I love online teaching? I mean, it's different. I teach in person. I teach online. It can be very, very, very effective. Check and be careful of, of being scammed and, and getting your money taken from you. One of the, the articles I wrote many years ago uh, about how to avoid a scam went viral and became so popular that Nightline uh, contacted me and asked me to go undercover to start to close down on these modeling agencies in the malls. And I was all over it because I think in another lifetime, I'd really love to be a PI. I'd love to be a private investigator. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> But again, research, do your research, know where you're putting your money down. When you're taking a class, you know, is this the right class for your child? Who is this person? Are they somebody that's a good marketer and that's going to, you know, say they can make your child a star because nobody can make you a star. So do a little research. If you're not sure, you contact the Better Business Bureau, um, you know, seek out people that you can trust. But but, you know, allow your child to have this experience if this is what makes them happy. And there's lots of ways to do that. You know, I had a client who uh, had two children who were talented, but they had hemophilia. And uh, she was so afraid to let them go out and play sports or anything because they would hurt themselves. So she thought, you know what, maybe show business is something that would be a little gentler on your body. And, uh, and, and they were very successful, these kids. And she found a way to do something with her kids, which I thought was so incredible because they really couldn't do anything. But when they were able to do this, they were so happy and it was something they wanted. So I don't know, that just came to my mind. And it was such an important thing because these kids couldn't do anything, you know. I and love that. Also a child, you know, with a disability, um, because we now know, right, you know, this is a uh, 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 roles are going to to actors with 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 disabilities i mean there's a huge market for it and oh my so God. yeah so you know anybody can do this it's it's how do they want to do it they don't have to do it professionally uh you know and i always caution parents if that's going to take the fun out of it then maybe you want to keep them doing it but maybe you know they don't have to make a living at it so again that's where the life coaching will come in and in in, in working with this particular child and this particular family and really is it right for that child and for that family you know i had a client who's a little girl she was six years old she she, she booked about 80 commercials, but her mother would give her 
$5 if she booked a regional, $10 if she booked a national. I mean, talk about unconditional love, <laughs> you know? This kid only got love when she booked a commercial and it was in a monetary form. Weird. But yeah. you know what? If, if this kid didn't book, she wouldn't have any love. So I'll, I'll tell you what I miss about those days, Aggie, when we started with the jingles and with the commercials, how much money these kids made. Oh, so we, my God. That doesn't happen anymore because everything is a buyout and everything is non-union. Yeah. Yeah. They made a lot of money. And, and that's what really intrigued a lot of parents. Right. And they could make a lot of money now, but it's going to take a little longer. Yeah, if somebody is doing this for money or fame, they have to really, really, really take a look at that because yeah. that's no reason to go into the industry. That's a needle in a haystack. You know, do you have any? Well, I have clients that have called me and wanted me to meet their children. Oh, yes. Isn't that wonderful? I'm working with my clients' children. <laughs> oh, yes. It's it's incredible. But uh, I know. I've been around. And I, I know you interviewed Bob recently, uh, yes. Bob Martin. I work with very closely and yes uh, we just did a show together that we produced and um yes we you know we've got our clients kids with us I now. know isn't that fabulous we're in such a great industry it I mean is. I love it it is you it know is. that's why when somebody comes to me and says help my child wants to be an actor talk me out of it I said why would you want to <laughs> <laughs> your child has a passion they have a reason to get up in the morning that's right yeah Okay. This was, this was great. This was just great. Thank I you knew. so much. Great to reconnect and that we're both <laughs> doing this after all this just because we love it. Yeah. I love it. I'm not going anywhere. Good. I'm staying. It's been almost 40 years. Same. And I have a client who's been with me for 40 years. Wow. Alec, Alec Mappa. He's been with sure. me right, right out of college. Yeah, I remember. And, uh, now I, now he, he has children, and I mean, right. I went through his whole life with him, and uh, it's 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 you develop the greatest relationships, and the loyalty is so. What can I tell you? It warms my heart. You know, I mean, I get calls from people who I represented years. I just heard from somebody the other day, a little girl, Cashel Campbell who did a lot of work on Sesame Street and she just wrote me and I can't wait to talk to her because I haven't spoken to her in 30 years, you know, and um, it's just so great. It's, I've never gotten a complaint, not that I'm bragging, but I never really have, you know, and uh, it's nice because I was always very concerned about the child's welfare. But that's it. You're kind and loving and smart. And so, you know, those are the types of reps that, uh, you know, that I guide my clients to. I also like to think of myself as a matchmaker. So, you know, one of my hats is, is uh, the career consulting where I don't manage anymore today. But I will set a child up with an agent or manager that I think is the right fit. And not everybody is the right fit. I also want to mention before we, we uh, leave today that I am going to be starting a membership for parents. It's going to be a forum for parents to get together with each other and with me so that, you know, they love they do want to speak to each other and find out what's working them and how they're dealing with this, but it's going to be obviously monitored by me so that it's not a free for all. Um, and that's going to happen later this year uh, where they, uh, you know, get a lot of information together as a group and, uh, and, and can form a parent community. Oh, that sounds fabulous. That is so needed. Wow. I love that. Denise, it has been wonderful, really wonderful. Thank you so much. And I really hope you come back. Thank you, because Aggie. You have so much to offer. Thank you so much. It's been so great. And uh, and yes, I, let's have you on my podcast and we'll chat some more. And, you know, the business I would is love that. changing, uh, but we're not. We're still here and it's very easy to find me. Uh, if anybody's listening and they want to be able to find me through my website, denisesimoncoaching.com, through uh, any of the platforms that my podcast is, my book, Parenting in the Spotlight on Amazon, the Drama Bookshop. Uh, and uh, if you shoot me an email, info at denisesimoncoaching.com, I will respond. Excellent. I'm glad you did all that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Thank you very much. This has Th been great. Thank you, Aggie. See you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks 
Thanks for listening to Fresh Faces with me, Aggie Gold. Storygram Network. 